Russia vows to fight for China if it goes to war with Taiwan, sparking World War Three fears. And this is how it starts. You don't you don't see it coming. You don't suspect it. We see war on one front. We say it's limited war in Eastern Europe. There's a potential for conflict with Taiwan and China, but we don't think it escalates. And then Russia says we need help in Ukraine. China says we need help in Taiwan. You get a military alliance. You get conflict in multiple theaters. One by one, nations get drawn in and then fire Z missiles because there are even fears that nuclear war could erupt. A Putin ally saying, yeah, if it comes down to it, they're going to nuke London. No joke. They actually said, now, I don't know this, how much of this is official. It's a, a lot of it could be bluster. But man, things are getting crazy. The big news today, I mean, outside of the fact that Russia is like, yo, we're going to be we're going to be joining China if a war breaks out. China says they're going to be launching missiles over Taiwan. They've also planned to encircle the island nation because of Pelosi's visit. And we've got reports that 27 Chinese warplanes have already violated the Taiwanese air defense zone. So bring on World War Three, I guess. Part of me wants to say it'll never happen. But as I often reference with the Civil War, Fort Sumter, when people sat atop the hillside thinking no war would ever break out, so they had a picnic. Don't be so naive. This is legitimately worrying. This is exactly how you get the dramatic escalation. Now, it could be. Nancy Pelosi is safe. She'll return. China will be mad. But this does heat things up in a rather serious way. It could be worse. We could be, we could be staring down a Franz Ferdinand type situation. Nancy Pelosi, a high ranking official in the United States, goes and visits Taiwan. And one person does something against her in some way that just triggers diplomatic collapse. You'll get U.S. military action immediately. They'll go in and say, we're going to get this guy. China says, no way. It's our citizen. They say, don't you touch him. And then pew, pew, pew. We've already got fighting in Ukraine. Russia already believes that they're at war with NATO. So when they talk about a fear of World War Three and Chinese warplanes are entering Taiwanese air defense zone with Nancy Pelosi on site, it's like, uh, yo, we're getting dangerously close to some real conflict. Now, the funny thing about all of this, is I, I just I got to include it. Nancy Pelosi suggests her gender is why China is so angry. Yeah, this is the problem with wokeness. These vapid, narcissistic psychopaths like Nancy Pelosi are like, they're only doing this because I'm a woman. Dude, they think Taiwan is theirs. This is nothing to do with gender. Knock it off. I'm not going to sit here and pretend Nancy Pelosi came out and screamed. I'm woman. Hear me roar. She was just like, I didn't see China doing this when the men showed up. Yo, that's not why they're doing it. OK, they're doing it because we are dangerously close to some serious conflict. And this is the leadership we get. Rob Reiner's got a tweet I'll pull up in a minute where he's like, Joe Biden has done a tremendous job this first first year in, in office. And it's like, dude, no, no. I mean, if his goal is to destroy this country, sure, you can call it a good job. But it's absolutely amazing. This is where we're at. You got Pope Francis saying World War Three has already started. You've got Vladimir Putin, his allies, uh, his media propagandists saying that we're at war with NATO and threatening to nuke London. Well, life's not boring, I guess, but I hope you're taking all of this seriously. And I hope nothing happens. I hope it's all bluster. Seriously, I do. But you know what, man? Weak men make hard times. And that seems to be what we are about to encounter. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com and become a member to help support our work and to get access to exclusive, uncensored TimCast After Hour segments Monday through Thursday. We have our guests on the show on TimCast IRL, and then afterwards we have the not-so-family-friendly version of the show. Last night's was really graphic. I mean, I got to give you a warning because this is not for the faint of heart. We were talking about monkeypox and stuff like that. So, But we also have new shows coming up. The uh, Cast Castle reboot uh, introductory promo show is, might, might actually be like 40 minutes. is coming up soon. And Tales from the Inverted World episode five just came out. We've got more and more shows coming to TimCast.com. Big marketing pushes. We are going to make a legitimate top tier streaming service for all of you to challenge those in the culture war, 
to uh, instill the ideas of individualism and freedom with your support. We will make that happen. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share this video right now, share the show anywhere you can if you really want to help. Paste it, post it, whatever. Let's read that first story from the mirror. They say a top Russian senator has pledged his country's support if Russia goes to war over Taiwan, sparking fears of a massive escalation and World War III. Vladimir, I'm not going to pronounce this right, Jabarov, Jabar, Jabarov says he sees no grounds to refuse to help China as tensions in the region have risen after the visit of U.S. Speaker Nancy Pelosi. In his role as first deputy chairman of the International Committee in Russia's Federation Council, he said he hopes to help. He hopes help for China would be a two way movement as Russia continues its war in Ukraine. It means that we should have some benefits from this cooperation. I am convinced that in this case, China hopes for a certain assistance from Russia. My understanding is that China is producing drones for Russia. And they're going to need and want that. Alluding to the possibility of a Chinese confrontation with the U.S., the Putin ally insisted China was behaving in a restrained manner and that he is convinced it will be difficult for them to go toe to toe with the U.S. without support from Russia. Tensions over Taiwan have risen in recent days and reports show that live fire drills by the Chinese military were taking place a mere 12 nautical miles from the disputed island. That is to say, China has surrounded Taiwan and are firing live rounds. This is getting serious. The big news now, we may actually see this escalation. China signals plan to launch missiles over Taiwan in a dramatic, troubling escalation. They've never done something like this before. Firing missiles over Taiwan? Dark days indeed, my friends. USnews.com reports, China signaled on Wednesday, It plans to dramatically escalate military provocations aimed at Taiwan to include flying missiles over it for the first time. A clear sign that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's departure from visiting the island nation marks not the end of a burgeoning standoff with the U.S., but rather the beginning of one. The English language Global Times news outlet, which is aligned with the Chinese Communist Party, included in a post early Wednesday that conventional missiles are expected to fly over the island of Taiwan for the first time in response to the California Democrats' day-long stopover to meet with local officials, which Beijing considers a clear break from standing policy governing the island over which it claims dominion. Other posts have indicated China's military operations serve as a rehearsal for the forced reunification of the mainland and Taiwan, which Beijing considers nothing more than a renegade province. Quote, it is both unprecedented and highly provocative. Taylor Fravel, an expert on Chinese military decision making and a professor at MIT says of the proposed missile launches. He adds it is clearly designed to intimidate the people of Taiwan and underscore the threat of Chinese missiles to the island. I think based on Joe Biden, he's, he's set to uh, sign a bill funding chip manufacturing. They think Taiwan's going to fall. Will the U.S. intervene or will they let it? Considering the moves they're making now, the U.S. may believe that Taiwan is going to fall soon. To avoid World War III, will the U.S. back down and let China take the island nation? While the Global Times is not a direct mouthpiece for the Chinese government, current and former U.S. officials and analysts believe the content the outlet produces aligns with the party's intentions and that it frequently publishes what party officials choose not to say publicly themselves. To put it simply, you do not in China come out and speak unless the CCP knows and approves. Analysts consider the latest moves a marked escalation over the kind of military exercises that usually accompany a perceived slight against Beijing. Its Eastern Theater Command has indicated its plans. It plans the closure of an area east of Taiwan to be used for conventional firepower missile tests, which could mean the use of ballistic missiles. Depending on the location of the launches, the missiles could fly over Taiwan. Now, Taiwan's officially the Republic of China. It's the original China government. They fled when the communists started taking over. White House officials have indicated in recent days that the response to Pelosi's visit, both in advance of her arrival and after she touched down aboard a U.S. military aircraft on Tuesday, had at the time aligned with normal escalations. National Security Council spokesman John, John Kirby told reporters moments after Pelosi's arrival 
that what we've seen thus far is consistent with the playbook that we expected from China. We expected China to run. And we'll just keep watching. And officials in Beijing have stated clearly they will continue to respond forcefully to Pelosi's visit. If military, it's military announced earlier this week that it will begin maritime drills on Thursday in zones encircling Taiwan that come far closer to the island's shores than prior displays. Some of the zones in which it says it will operate come within 10 nautical miles of the Chinese mainland. Now, my understanding is that would be violating international norms. China keeps claiming Taiwan is China. Technically, that's true. I mean, Taiwan is China, but the CCP is not the legitimate government, although they've been in power for some time. Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense also announced early Wednesday an incursion by three Chinese military aircraft in the, in the Taiwan Strait across the median line, a division bifurcating the waterway known as the Davis Line that Chinese aircraft have crossed with increasing regularity in the last two decades. Well, my friends, we have an update on that story. The Daily Mail reporting 27 Chinese warplanes enter Taiwan's air defense as Taipei says it won't shy away from a fight. President Xi sends forces to surround island as part of his plan to secure his unification legacy. Dozens of Chinese warplanes entered Taiwan's air defense zone shortly after Nancy Pelosi flew out of the country following a diplomatic visit. This goes to show China is not satisfied with their displays during her visit. I think their goal now is to make a send a strong message to effectively punish Taiwan to make sure they know they're doubling down. I think we're dangerous, dangerously close to China moving in. I think that's why Pelosi went in. Taipei's generals have defied the threats, saying today that they are not looking for a fight with China, but they won't shy away from one either. We are resolved to uphold our sovereignty, liberty and democracy, they said in a statement posted alongside a video of fighter jets, submarines, attack helicopters and warships on maneuvers. We fear no threat or challenges. We are not eager for a fight, nor will we shy away from one. We have the capacity and the will to uphold our valued liberty and democracy and maintain our region's stability. Xi Jinping has reacted furiously to Pelosi's visit, the most senior U.S. politician to go to Taiwan in the last 25 years, which comes weeks before he is due to assume his historic third term as China's leader at the party Congress. Matthew Henderson, associate fellow at the Council on Geostrategy, told Mail Online, she has made so-called reunification with Taiwan his chosen cause and hoped for legacy and hoped for legacy as China's greatest leader since Mao. It would be as well to assume that in the run up to the party Congress, when he intends to secure permanent autocracy, she will be willing to take significantly greater risks than Chinese governments in the past. Now, it was reported in these stories that China is planning to encircle the nation. They're planning four days of military drills in areas encircling Taiwan. Do you think Taiwan cares what they call it? Do you think the U.S. is so stupid that they're going to be like just a drill? Nah, this is not how things work. You got to you got to cut through the noise and you need to understand what's really being said. When Russia goes to war in Ukraine and the U.S. provides intelligence, firepower and weapons, do you think Russia simply says, wow, Russia's so strong? No, Russian propagandists and I'm sure Russian officials, they have already stated. I should say, I'm assuming Russian officials have stated this. Russian propagandists have already said this is NATO. This is World War Three. They don't think they're at war with Ukraine. They know NATO is funding, supplying, and there are even NATO citizens on the ground with these countries being like, we didn't send them. They're volunteering. Yeah. Privateers, as it were. During the olden days, the old colonial era, this is what would happen. A privateer, a Corsair, would attack a French ship and, and the British would be like, don't look at us. It's just a private ship. We can't control them. Except they often carries, carried letters of mark. So if they were ever stopped by the crown, by the British, they'd say official duty. We have a letter of mark allowing us to attack French supply lines. How's that for warfare? You think it's not happening today? No, the reality is China and Russia are simply holding back. Russia knows who they're really fighting against. And if they wanted an escalation of war, they would have it. They would make it happen. Now, here's the funny stuff here. 
Nancy Pelosi hints her gender is behind China's rage. Oh, man. Quote, they made a big fuss because I'm the speaker, I guess. I don't know if that was a reason or an excuse. She said during a news conference with the Taiwanese president. Because they didn't say anything when the men came. Forgive me for doing my impersonation of Nancy Pelosi. She said they made a big fuss because I'm the speaker, I guess. I don't know if that was a reason or excuse because they didn't say anything when the men came. Okay, dude, that makes me want to barf in my mouth a little bit. This is such a, a trope. Uh, uh, when a feminist does something and then says, the real reason they're mad is because I'm a feminist. It's like, dude, get over yourself. Sometimes people, regardless of if they're men or women, do bad things. They didn't do this when the men came. You're a high ranking official, dude. And they're escalating tensions. Can we please get better leadership? I love this from Spectator World. Is Nancy Pelosi about to cause World War Three? Ah, yes. Uh, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, West could trigger nuclear war over Ukraine, Russia says at UN, August 2nd. With Russia announcing they're going to be joining China should conflict erupt. The reason we're so close to conflict isn't all Nancy Pelosi, but she certainly made things worse. I can respect going to China and saying you do not dictate how we travel. Strong America is a good America, but I don't like abuse of power, failed foreign policy. And I don't know how necessary it is to be like, we're going to do it. It's like, OK, I get it. If I'm going to go to an event and then you threaten me, I'm not going to let you force me out. But sometimes you ask yourself, like, do I need to be there? Like, why should someone go into the center of an Antifa rally? Do you really need to be there? Now, look, we can send undercover people and things like that, but you choose your battles. That being said, the reason why I, res why I can respect the trip is, you know, if someone decides I'm going to go stand here, free country, I'll do what I want. It's like, I get it. You're making a stand. You're saying outright, I'm not going to let you tell me where I get to stand. So I get it. Newsweek reports, Putin ally announces first city Russia will strike if World War Three starts. Oh, boy. This one's from just over a month ago, a month and a half ago or so. A lawmaker in Russia has become the latest guest on Kremlin-backed television to warn of a missile strike on a European capital, naming the city that he believes should be Moscow's first target. What do you think it is? What's the first city that comes to mind? I didn't get it. He raised the prospect of invading the Baltic in his strategy, which included reverting the Lithuanian capital uh, Vilnius back to its former identity as Vilno and Estonian capital Tallinn back to its Soros identity as Raval. Both Estonia and Lithuania are NATO countries and any invasion by Russia would trigger Article 5, potentially causing a third world war. Anton Gerashenko tweeted, London is first to be hit if World War Three starts, says Andrei Gurilov, Putin's close political ally. But what about the families of Russian politicians and oligarchs who live in London? He says, we'll destroy the entire group of enemies' space satellites during the first air operation. No one will care if they are American or British. We would see them all as NATO. Mitigate the entire system of anti-missile defense. And that we certainly won't start from Warsaw, Paris, or Berlin. The first to be hit will be London. Without a doubt, the threat to the world comes from the Anglo-Saxons. Woo! Things are getting spicy, man. And this was over a month ago. Well, let's turn to good old Pope Francis to see what he has to say. He says World War Three has been declared. OK, that was a that was a month and a half ago, a little bit more than that. So the Pope said, what did he really say? This, this is amazing. Quote, World War Three has been declared. Pope Francis said in a wide ranging conversation with the editors of European Jesuit publications on May 19th. So this is this is three months ago or two and a half months ago. The Pope said World War Three. Oh, man, you know. I worry about this stuff. I do. It's one of the reasons I don't want to live in cities. It's not just civil war. It is everything falling apart. It is global conflict. It is Nancy Pelosi. It is nuclear missiles. Where, I, where, where we are right now, we are fortunately just outside of the blast radius of the largest ICBMs. We might be okay. The problem is Mount Weather is very close. It's hard to know what they'll hit. I do believe 
that the United States has the capability to defend against nuclear weapons. We can see Thad and the Iron Dome system. There's a sight to behold, I'll tell you. Ever watch the Iron Dome? Missiles, you see them get fired straight over from, from Gaza into Israel. And then all of a sudden you see spiraling missiles tracking and then blowing up the rockets in midair over, over Israel, over Tel Aviv. Crazy stuff. I remember when the news first came out that, that the, I believe it's the al qassam brigades that, um, that uh, Palestine, Gaza, or whatever you want to call it, they had access to missiles that could now reach Tel Aviv. This was like a decade ago. And it's a scary thought. I was talking to someone I, I knew who was in Tel Aviv, and they said a rocket had just exploded over their home. The Iron Dome can't stop everything, but I believe the U.S. has something comparable to this. Why wouldn't they? They need to be able to take out nukes before they can hit the ground. Well, they don't blow up on the ground. They're air bursts. The way a nuclear weapon will go off is that at a certain point above the target, it detonates so that you get more pressure just hitting everything else. It's crazy. It wouldn't work. A gr- ground burst isn't as effective. Air burst is how they do it. Boom, over the city, and then it just waves and just hits everything. If Mount Weather were hit by the largest nuke, we're in trouble. Mount Weather is supposedly where uh, they have emergency bunkers and stuff like that, but I really doubt it. There's no way they're going to be like, that's where our emergency bunker is. So they can be targeting it. Yeah, but they might hit it. It's like, why not? Maybe it is. It's probably probably an old, uh, you know, emergency bunker. They probably don't use it anymore. I imagine they have to update it. Well, fear not, my friends. I have good news. Spoon Bender. Yuri Geller says he'll use mind power to stop nuclear war. Whew. I was getting worried there for a minute. But then when you get the uh, Yuri Geller guy, the spoon bending feller, saying he's going to use his mind powers to stop nuclear war. Well, rest easy, my friends. That means we're safe. Okay, hopefully that gave you a laugh before we move into the next one. Here's a tweet. Rob Reiner said it before. I'll say it again. Joe Biden has accomplished more in his first two years than any president in the last 60. We all need to shout this from the rooftops. Well, it's been a year and a half, but okay. I said if his goal is effing the country up, then I agree. Seriously. We are, we are facing World War II, I'm sorry, World War III and Civil War. At the same time, gas prices are through the roof. Inflation is in a, is, is in a major crisis. The economy is in a re- recession. They're changing definitions. Great accomplishments, Biden. CNET reports. Biden set to sign law to pump $53 billion into U.S. chip manufacturing. The boost for U.S. chip making is part of the broader $280 billion Chips and Science Act. Fear of Chinese manufacturing power, part of the impetus. This says right here, this is breaking news from today. I think, they're, they, I think they know. China is going to take Taiwan and it is going to happen soon. If we're to follow the track of the strauss howe generational theory, the fourth turning, then it's going to happen this year. The conflict is it would need to happen this year. I don't I'm not saying it will. I don't know. Maybe this will be the one time the theory is wrong. Well, I should put it this way. Strauss Howe generational theory basically looks at cycles, 20 year cycles based on generations. Simply put, strong men make good times. Good times make weak men. Weak men make hard times. Hard times make strong men. You've heard it before. The American Revolution. 80 years later, what happened? The American Civil War. 80 years later, what happened? World Wars one and two. And that went on for some time. 80 years later, here we are. Are we going to see a major conflict? And will it be fought with the most powerful weapons of the day? That's what they say. Biden is pumping money into chips. President Biden will sign the Chips and Science Act of 2022 on August 9th in a Rose Garden ceremony. White House said in a press statement Wednesday, a move that will flood 52.7 billion in funding to U.S. chip makers over five years. <clears throat> the bill should help companies like Intel and global foundries compete with Asian processor manufacturers like Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co., TSMC, Samsung in South Korea, and Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation in China. The bill is designed to help tech companies in the U.S. cut the enormous expense of chip manufacturing 
to help ensure a supply of the electronic brains that are critical to cars, computers, weapons, systems, dishwashers, toys, or just about any other product today that uses electricity. The extent of the U.S. reliance on those processors became clear over the last two years when a global chip shortage halted shipments of many of those products, harming businesses and forcing automakers to shut down car plants. Congress approved the measure last week with a 243 to 187 vote in the House of Representatives and a 64 to 33 vote in the Senate, largely with Democratic support, but also with some Republicans on board. The bill will supercharge our efforts to make semiconductors here in America. China, America's top geopolitical rival and the world's manufacturing leader, has spent lavishly on a program to build its own native semiconductor industry. And many are concerned the world's top chipmaker TSMC is headquartered on an island that China claims as its own territory, a concern that's grown after Russia invaded Ukraine despite international objections. Although the CHIPS Act is designed to boost U.S. chipmaking, TSMC remains important to U.S. manufacturing. Taiwan's central role in geopolitics was on display this week as Pelosi did her thing. Yeah, 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 we get it. We get it, we get it. Coincidence? A coincidence that Biden is going to be signing this bill and Pelosi heads over to Taiwan? Maybe she went in there and said, we're not going to be able to defend you. China is, is firing missiles over this nation now. They're surrounding it. Russia has vowed to protect them. And the U.S. may have been going over there to privately say, when the time comes, you will not have our support. I don't know. I don't have access to top secret information or confidential stuff or any of that war information stuff. I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you this. We stand on the precipice, my friends, of something greater than just internal conflict. If this really does devolve one, at one, one, one by one, nations lining up against each other. If war, with Ta- if, if war with Taiwan breaks out, with you know China invading Taiwan, the U.S. defends them, then Russia says we are joining the side of China and starts supplying weapons. China starts supplying drones. All of a sudden, the Ukrainian war front explodes. We've got war in Eastern Europe and the Pacific theater. What happens then? Japan, Australia intervene immediately on behalf of the U.S. going to war with China. China, obviously aided by Russia, will seek to find allies in other countries. You've got the BRICS countries. What will Brazil do? I don't know. But you've got India. You've got South Africa. It's hard to see them lining up with China, but they are BRICS nations. You've got Turkey. Where do these chips fall? I don't know if they'll fall in support of China and Russia. But how much do we really need? They've got nukes, baby, and Russia's got one of the most powerful ICBMs ever put into commission. So it doesn't matter, I think, if it's only Russia and China. It could be that Russia simply says, you will never win because we will nuke London before we allow you to stop us. Meanwhile, inside the United States, DOJ subpoenas White House counsel Pat Cipollone. This is crazy. This is a lawyer being subpoenaed by the DOJ. This country is falling apart. Do you believe that we can withstand an international conflict of this scale while inside this country, our our DOJ has been weaponized and is ripping this country apart, spitting in everyone's faces with a smile on their own? Psychotic. Nancy Pelosi may have gone to Taiwan letting them know that the United States faces a controlled demolition and China will win. Good luck. It's the craziest thing. You can't tell me it's not on purpose when they say there's a food shortage, but then European nations tell their farmers to stop farming. Maybe they want to preserve fuel for the upcoming war. That's a possibility. You stop farmers from buying diesel Less amount of the diesel supply is going to go to farming equipment and more is going to be available for militaristic operations. I don't know if that's actually going to be the case. I can just tell you this, man. Europe and the U.S. are imploding. Maybe. If Donald Trump, if if in November Republicans win, they can put a stop to this. They can stop the insanity. That would require charging people. It would require inquiries and indictments. Maybe then Donald Trump wins and we see the U.S. stick to being the U.S. Well, I don't believe in isolationism. Maybe the U.S. will actually come around to justifying defensive maneuvers to stop, say, China, 
or Russia instead of proxy wars, World War Three, oil pipelines, etc. This is what they're thinking, or at least based on what I know. They're thinking that if the U.S. does not have unipolar power on this planet, China will take it. And it's only a matter of time before the U.S. is encircled and sanctioned and shuttered. And we're forced to live under the boot of communist China. I'm not happy with that idea. But that's our weakness, I suppose. A channel like this could, it could not exist in China. They have to approve of it. They lock people up. They arrest them. At least that's what we think. I think we know enough about what's going on with the Uyghur Muslim camps. China denies. They say it's propaganda. The reality is in the United States, for all the problems we have with censorship, there still are dissenting voices. There still is a constitution. And that's why we must defend it and protect it. And that's why this country is worth defending. Because the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, it's brilliant. Article 5 is coming close, my friends. Republican conservatives, I should say, about 15 states away. I think there's like four more states need to have Republican legislatures. And then you will have a clear path to a convention of states to amend the Constitution. And the left is losing their mind. They're freaking out. They're saying the conservatives are going to totally gut and rewrite the Constitution, which is just not possible because states still have to ratify the Constitution. But if you got 38 states to propose amendments, what could happen? They're not going to ban guns. These 38 states are conservative. They're going to protect guns. They're probably going to institute limits on the federal government. I think it's a good thing. Maybe we need civil servant term limits. I don't know. It goes without saying that there are advantages to having a bureaucratic state because they can enact policies over a longer span of time than just a president. But the cons, I believe, currently outweigh the benefits. The cons are that we are we are being ruled by unelected bureaucrats. And therein lies the big problem. For us, if World War Three does erupt, there's no way we can handle it at this point. Not with insane people like Pelosi or Biden. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 8 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash Timcast IRL. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.